Once in a while, I receive emails of people who've been following me for a while. They've watched all my videos. They try to apply my advice. They apply to many blockchain jobs, but they only got rejections or worse, they didn't get any answer. And so logically, they start to lose patience and they are even thinking of giving up and maybe trying something else than blockchain. And I can understand this feeling. But the thing is, these people usually do some mistake in terms of their attitude or the action they took. So if you are in this case, watch this video because I'm going to explain how you can get unstuck and finally find your first blockchain job. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel in the blogs, I teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job. So the first thing you need to do is to change the way you think. So there are many people who are stuck, who cannot get their first blockchain job, who have this victim mentality. They try to make up some excuses for themselves. And the sad thing is maybe some of these excuses are real, but the problem is making up excuses, it's not going to help you in life. It's just going to leave you as someone without any power. So the first thing you need to do is to change this mentality. You are not a victim. Instead, you are responsible for your life. You need to replace the sentence. Oh, I have the right to find a blockchain job because I work so hard. No, this is not true. You have a responsibility to find a blockchain job. That's totally different. So when you start to be responsible for that, you will find solutions, not excuses. Another thing you need to change in your approach is instead of trying to take value from companies, try to offer value. For example, I'm going to give you a personal example. So in the past, I was looking for a blockchain job and this was, there was this company who contacted me in the past and they seemed super keen to hire me, but all of a sudden they changed and it, it became uh, kind of dead. And a few weeks or a few months after I reached out to them again to ask them, what about the job application? Uh, is there any news? And instead of asking about the, the job application itself, I didn't do this. So I created a document that created, I created a Google doc where I explained what was my plan, what, what kind of value I was planning to, to bring them. So it was for a job of developer relations. So that's a special kind of job where it's a special kind of developer position where you don't really do development, but actually you sort of manage developer communities. You have to write tutorials, etc. And so in this Google Doc, I explained them what was my plan to develop their community of developer and how I would bring them more users. And so the way I reapproach them is by saying, hey, I have an idea about how you can develop your developer community. So you can check out in this Google Doc and I'll be really happy to help you with that if we work together. And they really appreciate it and they read the doc and the conversation resumed thanks to this because I was in the position of offering value, not taking value. So remember these two things, don't be a victim, but be responsible and second, offer value, don't take value. And once you start giving value, naturally after that, you will start to also receive value. Once you understand this, the next step is to work on your positioning as a blockchain developer. So there are many newbies who want to get into the blockchain industry and just say, okay, I want to get into blockchain. They quickly put together their CV and they send their CV and then they are surprised that they don't get any answer or only rejection. The truth is, if you don't know where you're going, you will never get there. And if you just say, I want to get in the blockchain industry, unfortunately, this is not specific enough. The blockchain industry has grown a lot. And so now we have many different specialities. So first, as a blockchain developer, you can be specialized in smart contracts. So that means you need to be really good at solidity, understanding the Ethereum virtual machine, understanding how you can do gas optimization and also be really good at security and know how you can make your smart contract safe. 
Another way you can specialize is to be a front-end specialist. So in this case, you'll be really good with the front-end of your decentralized application. You will know how to integrate them with a smart contract by using libraries such as Web3 or EtherJS. You will understand what are the specific UI UX challenges of decentralized exchanges and especially the integration with different wallets like MetaMask. And also you'll be very good for front-end web development. So JavaScript, uh, React, maybe even TypeScript. TypeScript is actually more and more required for high-end front-end developer positions. Another way you can specialize is by being a DevOps. So in this case, you know how to set up private blockchain network. You know how to do continuous integration with smart contracts. So every time a developer pushes a smart contract to GitHub, it will trigger some automation like automatic testing. We check the test coverage and maybe in some cases, automatic deployment, etc., etc. This is only for really big companies. Smaller companies usually don't need DevOps. You can also be a specialist in DeFi or decentralized finance. So that means you will understand a lot of different DeFi protocol. You will know how to integrate them. In this case, you position yourself at a slightly higher level and you are closer to the business. And you can also position yourself as a generalist. So in this case, you know a little bit of everything, a little bit of front end, a little bit of smart contract development, a little bit of DevOps, a little bit of DeFi. And in general, if you apply to smaller company, they will have more needs for generalists because they cannot afford a specialist for any specialization. And once you've decided what's your positioning on the market, you need to create a CV that reflects this positioning. So in your CV, avoid to put too much. Often time when I receive email from people who cannot find their first blockchain job, their CV really has way too many keywords. How could someone be specialized in so many different technology? That's not very credible. So you have to make a choice and only put the things that are super relevant to your position. And for the other things, either you don't put them at all or you really do a summary of all these skills and experience and you make it really short but you have to understand that companies they really don't have a lot of time to check your cv so you need to focus on what is really the most relevant the most important you put it at the top and when companies see this right away they know that you are the right candidate so in a way for cv less is more so in your cv you make some claim you say okay i'm proficient in such such and such technology but after you need to have something to back up your claims and typically for a developer, you back up your claim with a nice portfolio on GitHub. So if you have any nice blockchain project, put it on GitHub. And so this way you can justify that you actually have these skills. You don't need many projects, just a couple is enough. And ideally you should have a project that really, really stand out. So something that is really exceptional and not just a simple tutorial that you find on some Udemy course, like usually this will not work. And so that's why in my course, Six Figure Blockchain Developer for the Final Project, we build a decentralized exchange for EAS20 token with a really nice interface. So typically that's a really good example of a, this special project that I'm, I'm talking about for your blockchain portfolio. So once you finish all this prep work, you need to think about what kind of action you want to take. So you don't want to just redo all the things that you've been doing before, but didn't work. You want to change a bit. So of course you can keep sending your CV when you see a job offer, but there are other things that you can do that can be even more powerful, but maybe you will have to go a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Learning a new technology is one thing, but that's just one part of the equation. The other part of the equation, which is even more important, is how you can convince blockchain companies that you actually have these skills. A great way to do this is to do blogging or to create a YouTube channel. A YouTube channel is great, but that's really a lot of work. So maybe that you can start with a blog. And in this blog, you're going to write tutorials about blockchain. And the thing that many people don't understand is that you don't need to be a top expert in your field in order to do this. You don't need anybody permission. You just start a blog with WordPress or whatever blogging system. 
and you start to do some research about a specific problem, it doesn't need to be very long. It can just be, I don't know, 500 or 1000 words. And you explain how you can accomplish a, a certain task and, and that's enough. And after you can have a discipline where every week you publish a new tutorial and you do this for several months and boom, now you'll have 10, 20 articles on your blog. So very quickly you can have something really decent and you don't need anybody permission. And for companies who find you after they see that you're a blogger or a YouTuber, it will really make a big difference. Actually, when I find my first blockchain job that was in 2017, at that time, I already had my channel hit the blogs and it really made a big impact. That was really a major asset. If you want to take this advice even further, you can even create a book or a course on blockchain development. And once again, you don't need anybody permission. It's just up to you. It's clearly more work than just a blog or a YouTube channel. But again, the reward can be really great. For example, if you write a book about solidity and you still don't find a job, like, no, this is impossible. Like, if you have a book about solidity, for example, like, you will find a blockchain job. That's for sure. Then you can also start to organize meetup or speak to conferences. So I know that currently this is not really the right period for this, but eventually the world is going to restart and this real life event will resume. So organizing a meetup seems like something very scary, but actually it's not so complicated. You just have to find a room at a restaurant or a coffee shop. And usually owner of restaurant and coffee shop are really happy if you're going to bring them 15 or 20 people. And so they can give you some place where you can do your meetup and then people will uh, buy, I don't know, like some drinks and then everybody is happy. And I actually use this method myself. When I got started as a web developer, I was actually coming from finance. So I had no contact in the tech industry and I wanted to find customers quickly. So I started to organize meetups about programming and WordPress. And very quickly, this got really successful. I built some credibility and that's how I find my first customer as a web developer. So that's a method that is really, really effective. And that's not as hard as what most people think. You can also try to create an open source project or to contribute to one. So one idea might be to check out your favorite DeFi project that probably have some issue that needs to be fixed. You can also search in GitHub open source project that have some label that says uh, beginner friendly or um, help wanted. There is actually a list of label for people who, uh, who want to who are, who are beginner. You can, you can Google this very easily. Another thing that is super helpful is to be very active on social media. So Reddit and Twitter, actually a lot of the blockchain and crypto community is on Twitter. So you can start to follow some developer that you know, like me, but also Quickly, you will find some other developers to follow and you can start to like their tweets and start to participate to some thread, start to ask some question. For example, if you're doing a personal project for your, your blockchain portfolio, maybe you have some issue. Maybe, for example, you, you could be looking for the best API for cryptocurrency prices. I think that's actually a question I've asked a couple of weeks ago on Twitter. So ask a question, hey, does anybody know a good API for finding pl uh, prices of decentralized exchanges? And then you have some people who start to uh, to answer. And if you start to be more and more active on, on Twitter, then naturally you will start to know some people and people will start to pay attention to, to what you do. And so naturally uh, you start to build some relationship. And at some point, these people, if they hear about a job that they can think about you and Actually, I have uh, one of my students uh, started to be super active on, on Twitter. And I think that's how he find his first blockchain job. So he can really pay a lot of dividends to be active on social media and especially on crypto Twitter. So what if you try all the advice that I just mentioned, but it still doesn't work. You still cannot get your first blockchain job. Well, it's time to force your way in. So most newbies are focused on full-time job and of course full-time job is the angle but this is not the only way to acquire this precious blockchain experience 
Another way you can acquire some blockchain experience as a newbie is to do some freelance work. So freelance is a little bit messy than a full-time job. So that means that you will have customers and not employers and you will work on specific project, project that could last a few days, a few weeks or a few months. Freelancing is very hit or miss. You have some freelancers that do super well and you also have a, a ton of freelancers that are really struggling. They only, only get shitty client, they, they never get well paid, etc. But the big advantage of freelancing compared to a full-time job is that it's much easier to get started. So I'm not going to lie to you. At the beginning, it's quite likely that your customers as a freelancer will be quite shitty. But that's normal. That's how you get started as a freelancer. So you start to work with that sort of client. And because usually they are not very flexible on prices, you try to negotiate the scope of the project. So you say, okay, well, we're not going to increase the price, but instead of doing all of these things, we're only going to do this. Uh, you can also cut the project in different parts because sometimes some customers are still reluctant to reduce the scope. So you can tell them, okay, we're going to do everything, but for the first part, we're going to do only this and you're going to pay me that. And so you complete the first part and by the time you, you reach the end, your clients start to understand that what they wanted to do originally was way too much and so by themselves they will come to reason and reduce the scope of the project and so you do this for a couple of months and after that you have some real professional experience that you can put in your cv and that you can leverage to find an actual full-time job out of all the things i mentioned one of the most critical thing is to have a good positioning on the job market and have a good cv and if you need some help on that, you can book me for a private one hour video call. I'll put the link in the description. And after this video, if you want to keep learning all the tips for finding your first blockchain job, I have a full playlist for career advice in the blockchain industry. So I'll see you there.